Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be comparing uh, the stability of a cis and trans uh, cyclohexane rings where you have, when you have the substituents attached to them. So I'm going to be taking an example of a, a 1, 2 diethyl cyclohexane and you, I'm going to be drawing both cis and trans and I'm going to be talking about 1, 3 diethyl cyclohexane and I'm going to be drawing both cis and trans and uh, we're going to be trying to figure out among those whether in one uh, a constitution isomer you will have cis to be more stable and the other one you will have trans to be more stable and how do you really figure that out it's all based on how your equatorial and how many equatorial and how many axial positions you really get so let me just go ahead and uh, first draw the conformation here so I got this 1 2 diethyl cyclohexane I want to go ahead and draw one of them to be cis so let's suppose both of those are coming out of the page, and you could have both of those going back into the page as well, it doesn't really matter. But suppose I got both of those coming out of the page, and let me just kind of duplicate that. So in the other case, you'll have one of these going back into the page, so I'll draw that with dashed lines there. And I'll draw the second sets as well, 1,3 diethylcyclohexane, where you will have one of them to be cis to one another so I'll have both of those coming out of the page well not here rather at the third position and then you will have another one that's going to be going back into the page Okay, so let's go back there and draw the chair conformations on all of those one by one. Uh, it may take a little bit of time, but I'm going to try to make it fast. So let's go ahead and uh, draw the chair here. Okay, so I'm going to copy these and have multiple copies because I'm going to be drawing for all of them. And then, obviously, I'll have a flipped version of it, but I'll draw that in a minute. So, on this first one, let's move this down a little bit. I got this carbon number one here, carbon number two. And I can go ahead and take this carbon number one and carbon number two. And since they are both, they are both coming out of the page, so what I can do, I can make this going up like this. That's your coming, uh, going up, so that's going to be your axial position. And on the second one, where would you put it? Uh, well, it needs to be pointed up because they're both coming out of the page. So on the second one, this needs to be at this position right there because that axial, uh, equatorial position here is going to be pointed up. So that's going to be your two positions when you draw this uh, cis 1,2-diethylcyclohexane. And uh, clearly, I can go ahead and flip this. So when I go ahead and flip it, Let's see how that's going to look like. So first, let me go ahead and make uh, the chair confirmation. All right, so then this one right there is going to be here, and your two is going to be right next to it going clockwise. So what I'm going to do here before I actually make those, I'll just duplicate those because I'm going to be drawing the flipped version for the other ones as well. So when I'm drawing this, uh, when I'm drawing the flipped version of it, I'm going to have one right here and I'm going to have two right there. And uh, before on the first position, I got, I had an axial, but now when I flip it, this is going to become equatorial. So we're going to have one ethyl group on the equatorial. And then in the previous structure, we had the second position to be equatorial. But now all of a sudden, when you flip it, it's going to be on the axial. So you still have one equatorial and one axial in both those conformations. So if I really have to kind of uh, specify which one of those is going to be more stable, so maybe change the color there, they, both of those are going to be equally stable because in each case, they have one equatorial and one axial. Okay, now let's look at this uh, trance. So in trance, you're going to have one uh, coming out of the page and the other one going back into the page. And if I go ahead and number these, 
I would call this a one right there, call this two. So I'll have one going up just because uh, it's your apple grip on that first position is coming out of the page. It's kind of similar to what you have in the previous structure. Now this two, since it's going back into the page, I'm going to have to draw that pointed down. So another way of saying the atle groups on one and two, they are trans to one another. So you want to make sure you draw those trans to one another, where in case of one, it was pointed up. Now in case of two, it's pointed down. Now when you flip it, what happens? After flipping it, this becomes your carbon number one, and that becomes your carbon two. So in carbon number one, before it was on axial, so now all of a sudden you're going to make it going on the equatorial. And then on the carbon number two, it was axial before, and it's again going to be equatorial. So you want to make it a little bit slanted down here. Those are going to be your, both of those being the equatorial positions. And in the first confirmation, both of those were your axial positions. If I have to, between those two confirmations, if I have to say the second one is going to be more stable because you have two equatorial substituents, and the first one, both of those were in the axial. Now, if I want to compare between the two geometrical isomers, the cis and trans, in cis, I can clearly see I have one of the ethyls always equatorial and one of your ethyl was always axial but when I'm looking at my trans what I'm seeing here I have two on the equatorial or I will have both of those in the axial so since you have since in case of trans you have more groups on the equatorial the trans is indeed going to be more stable in that case. So this particular one is going to be more stable. And since that's going to be the most stable, we can say in comparison between the cis and the trans, the trans is going to be more stable geometrical configuration here than the cis configuration here. Let's try to do one, three, dimethyl cyclohexane. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call this one 1 here, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I can clearly see on the first one I got the ethyl pointed up. And then on the third position your ethyl is again pointed up. So I need to make that going up there. All right. And so both of those turns out to be the axials there. And when I flip it, what's going to happen? When I'm flipping it, uh, this becomes your 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6 here. And then when I'm flipping it, your axial becomes equatorial. So I'm going to have the equatorial position kind of pointed up here. And then I'm going to have on the third carbon, your ethyl grip was on the axial, but now it's going to be on the equatorial again. So that's going to be looking like this. So you can clearly see that both of these... Uh, uh, both of these ethyl groups are actually pointed up in both of those cases. So I got this pointed up right there and this axial group pointed up right there. And then the second case, oops, and similarly I got this uh, ethyl group on this first carbon pointed up. And the same story on the third carbon I got this ethyl group pointed up. So uh, both of those are indeed cis, but obviously your second one is going to be more stable. And why is that? Why would the second confirmation is going to be more stable? Because you got two ethyl groups on the equatorial positions. All right, that's your equatorial, that's your equatorial. And in the previous one, they were both in the axial positions. All right, now let's go ahead and try to draw this second confirmation uh, or second geometrical isomer, which is going to be the trans. So I'll call this 1, 2, and 3. So we got 1, 2, and 3. And I can go ahead and change the color there. So on the first one, I have this ethyl group pointed up like this. And then on the third one, it needs to be pointed down. So how is that going to look like? So remember, this is going to be your axial here. And then remember the other axials on this particular chair. Um, if I just draw it with lines, that's your other axial there. That's your other axial here. So the axial on the third one 
points in the same direction as that of the axle on the first one. So as a result, your second ethyl group needs to be on the equatorial, so it needs to be pointed down like this. Alright, so that's going to be on the equatorial position, and I can go ahead and take those out momentarily. And then when I flip it, what's going to happen? When I'm flipping it, this becomes one, that's two, three, four, five, and six. On the first one, your ethyl was on the axial position, but now it's going to be on the equatorial position. So you want to go ahead and draw that like this. And then on the third one, your ethyl grip previously was on the equatorial, but now all of a sudden you will have to draw that on the axial because your position is going to get flipped. So you got this right there. So between those two, you don't really have uh, one more stable over the other one because in every single, in both of those conformations, I got one axial ethyl, one equatorial ethyl. So this is going to be equatorial, that's going to be axial. So both of those, two of those are going to be equally stable. So sometimes that happens. But now, if I go back to the previous one there, we clearly saw this second confirmation that I have circled in the orange. That was more stable because you have two um, equatorial positions there. Now, if I want to compare between the cis and the trans there, let's say this was uh, your cis and that's your trans. Now, between the cis and trans, in this particular case, your cis is actually going to be more stable because in case of cis, you have two ethyl groups to be on the equatorial, then in case of trans, you only have, you're always going to have one axial and one equatorial. So this is how you're going to be looking at in terms of stability. And this one is going to be the most stable out of all of them. All right, so uh, this is when we're comparing the two geometrical isomers like we are doing here. But like I said, a lot of time you're just going to be looking at only one isomer and you're going to be drawing two different uh, conformations of that particular isomer. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.